disintegrating and there's a little loss in not having a traditional one but actually I'm, I'm getting fond of it the, the really the, the the traditional ones have these bowl backs and are so exquisite and so delicate and so so fragile and so resonant and so it just like they're just astonishing and um, so there's a, a famous uh, Stravinsky quote that harpists spend half their time tuning and half their time playing out of tune, right? <laughs> and uh, the thing is that we have... Which uh, half comes first? Ah, uh, well, this is... <laughs> this is not really a <laughs> but the thing is that there's an oud, there's an oud story that's just the same way. Uh, the, 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 the same joke was told. Uh, we have that, I think, from the year uh, 10, 20 or something like that. Like, we have a millennia old uh, quote about ouds that, that's the same joke, and it uh, it's, remains true except for these larger ones. Um, yeah, so, so Jaren, why, why do you talk so much about musical instruments like this when you are writing about computer technology? Mm. Instruments fit it's all an elaborate way? ruse to avoid talking about sex constantly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just talk about shoes, <laughs> sex with the middle. <laughs> it's like a code. <laughs> you just say, ooh. <laughs> question was, why do I talk about instruments so much? Well, you know, um, there are a lot of reasons. One is, um, uh, it's, musical instruments are more satisfying to me than computers are as yet. I mean, I devote my life largely to making computers better, and, and I think we've made a little progress, but they, they put it in perspective. They're humbling, because just as expressive machines, they're, they're uh, so much more intense. Um, actually, speaking of which, this is <laughs> this thing is a modern version of a very ancient instrument, which is a mouth organ from Southeast Asia. This one's from a modern Chinese one, and uh, th these are the first digital devices. They they have a sequence of similar parts that you're either on or off, and they're, they're uh, put into combinatorial state. So these are the very first bits, and then we these go back. Um, Oh, we don't know exactly how long, but between 10 and 20,000 years. But this one's a very, very new design. Um, and uh, um, as you'll hear, it, it has a kind of um, a soft, dulcet quality, sort of a hypnotic, very quiet, um, sort of breezy, almost. 
almost not there kind of uh, feeling to it. So, uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> simpler and smaller. So, um, and, and these are usually, you know, a weird thing happened with Chinese music where um, traditionally China sort of implodes and attempts to de destroy itself periodically but can't quite, and, and so that happened again with Mao like it had hundreds of times before, and they, they sort of attempted to forget Chinese music and then remembered something that was kind of like the Western movie version of Chinese music, and now gradually it's you know it's turning into Chinese music again. But like if you go to China and listen to somebody play this, it might be a sort of an orchestra concerto that sounds kind of like to our ears like the Western movie version of Chinese music. But um, you know when you read ancient Chinese texts about their music, it sounded pretty wild. So I think I actually might be sort of bordering on some sort of authenticity, although we can't be sure. Uh, 
<laughs> so, but they had a lot of, you know, clear out the spirits with like horrible, like intensity, you know, kind of music. So I think, I think I might be kind of there. What do you, I don't know. So this is this weird invention that <laughs> comes from Europe uh, in the last few centuries. Um, really wild history. It's a direct descendant of these mouth organs, actually. So that's no, true. Actually, what happened was in the ancient Silk Route, the mouth organs that were, you know, much simpler than that, traveled across the Silk Route, the Greeks knew about them, the Romans copied them and created this huge noise-making device called the hydralis that accompanied the gore in the Colosseum. And that thing was so big to operate that the slave boys were unreliable, so they had to make this keyboard, and that whole thing evolved into the pipe organ, and then when it was crossed with string instruments, turned into the piano. So, that, so weirdly enough, the fact that these things no longer are playable when they're giant resulted in this thing having keys. That, that actually did happen. I, you, you look doubtful, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
from Switzerland who was making these inside out Trinidad steel drums with little bumps instead of depressions. And he said, look at this lovely thing. You can play it. It's easy. It could be like an orphan instrument for kids. And I bought one from him and I, I thought it was just lovely. And then over the course of the next few years, this very strange thing happened, which is this cult developed around this thing. So it's kind of like this flying saucer shaped piece of metal and people go nuts about it and that you, you can't buy it without getting approval and you're not supposed to sell it and if you ever play one there'll be some fanatic who tells you you're not playing it right. It just became, and they became insanely expensive. They're like old violins now or something. And so then um, there were lawsuits between the original hand drum people and these new people. So now there's like this sort of craze of who can get the new little round metal instrument cult, I guess. And so this is one from Germany. It was a Hop Goblin music, you know, and I like it. You can tune it. So I can tune it to this kind of cool minor scale. That's all I know about it. It seems really nice. How do you tune it? You move little magnets around inside it. So there are these little curved magnets. You just randomly move them. <laughs> no, you, have to, you move them in and out to change the... Uh, and you can also move them off. You can sort of get them to rest. On, um, I don't know. They're hard to remove, but they're just like these little rare earth magnets on the inside. And so that's what that's all it is. It's just simple. So this is a brand new thing. Yet another thing to try to get on the plane back to the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> Does this look dangerous? I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> Put your socks inside. And oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. No, I, know, I somehow have this feeling that, that it'll x-ray badly, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Let's see, so what shall we do next? I have played one thing on each of the instruments I have in my arsenal this evening. So I, sh I will need to double up now. Put them all together. All together? <laughs>